Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Heath. Welcome back to the Vintage Workshop. Uh, we're going to start uh, out with our first project for the shop and that's going to be a door covering for the electrical panel here. Uh, when I finished the shop three months ago with walls, there are various places around uh, that are unfinished. I need to install new windows, so I didn't put the trim around the windows or the door. The windows are old single pane glass and I'm going to upgrade those to a better quality window so I can have better heat retention. But uh, bringing us back to this, this is the electrical service that's coming into the shop. I have 200 amp service here and uh, it supplies uh, all the power to the shop. 99% of the machines in the shop are three phase. So I have a rotary phase converter which I'll show you in a second down below. Uh, but uh, this is the service panel and the way I had to do the electrical service when I installed it all was having the panel flush to the walls but then I've got some, I don't know if you can see it here, but I've got some, uh, you know, big heavy cable that supplies the, uh, the shutoff to the power for the uh, phase converter, which is a 20 horsepower phase converter, which is down below. So what I want to do is I want to just build a nice cabinet door, which basically encloses this up. Looks good. It'll kind of look like, I'm hoping, it'll look like a toolbox uh, that's hanging on the wall, but really all it's going to do is uh, cover up the electrical panel and I'm going to leave the bottom open so that things like power cords can uh, still get plugged into this outlet here. I also have a phone jack. I mostly keep it unplugged because I don't like uh, being bothered when I'm up here so the business phone doesn't ring up here. It rings down in the house, but it will ring if I uh, hook up a phone. But So I want to keep that stuff open and available and accessible. And of course, as I add new power around the shop, uh, I will still have easy access to the uh, service panel by simply being able to remove uh, the, uh, the cabinet door that I'm going to build here. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to get this done. Okay, so every time I do a project, what I always try to do is uh, make up just some rough drawings. Not necessarily to scale. I try to get them to scale. But, uh, you know, put something on paper so that I have some numbers to look at. It just makes the cutting process go a lot faster. These three little pieces of paper here uh, basically represent this project. The picture on the left is the rough openings of both the uh, wall opening for the electrical panel as well as the uh, basic dimensions of the size of the door cabinet that I'm going to build. The center gives the center for, uh, drawing gives me all the numbers that I need for the size of the cabinet itself as well as a little bit of uh, rough sketched in detail for uh, any moldings I'm going to put on the top and then the uh, drawing on the right is just a rough drawing of the dimensions of the door so that I can figure out the rails, the styles, the size of the panels allowing for uh, expansion, contraction, shrinkage and all that good stuff. So I just wanted to show you this so that you know what I'm working off of. Doing this I have found for me makes the project go a lot faster because once I have it written down I can go through my cut list, make all the parts uh, and then uh, move on from there knowing that I've got everything that I need and not having to backtrack going back to the joiner then the planer uh, in order to make some more stock up the right size uh, because I forgot something. Out of my cherry stock I've selected these three boards to make up all the parts for the project. Uh, I'll be making the uh, center panel of the door out of the board on the right. The center board is going to represent the carcass for the box that is going to get mounted to the wall and the left board is going to be the face frame parts as well as the uh, rails for uh, the face frame that the uh, door is actually going to get mounted to. I'm going to do this as a face frame construction just so that it's a little bit more rigid because the top and bottom are going to be open so that I can run conduit in and out of there for future necessary installations for electrical so I want to make it as strong as I possibly can.
Okay, so here we are back to the project a couple of days later. Uh, yep, yeah, that's right, a couple of days. Uh, this is a really important step that I wanted to show you guys. I'm not going to do this all the time, but because it is uh, one of my first videos here, I definitely wanted to show this step in case some uh, guys that are just getting started in woodworking are uh, watching this because it's really important for you to know that just because you joint and plane your parts does not mean uh, that you're ready to go on to start uh, cutting things up to final dimension. Uh, here I have all of the parts uh, for the project for the little cabinet on the wall uh, stickered and stacked and they've been sitting here for a couple of days. Uh, the reason why that's important is, is because hey we all know wood moves and when wood is going to continue to move throughout its life but a lot of times when you joint and plane uh, the stock uh, to dimension it, you're going to release some internal tensions that are in the uh, logs and even though I cut this log and I know where this log came from uh, it came from my next door neighbor's property and I cut it I actually saw milled it myself 15 years ago uh, it still has the potential for movement so cut it up get it into our, you know rough dimensions leave yourself a little extra material and let it sit for a few days and then you know go ahead and check it a uh, really good place to check it is on the uh, in-feed or out-feed table of your joiner assuming that's flat mine is dead flat I had the tables ground so uh, check it and make sure that uh, you're dealing with flat stock is the worst thing in the world is to try to good uh, get good accurate joinery when uh, your boards are all warped and twisted because you're just not going to get good results you're going to attach the door to the front of the cabinet nothing's going to be square everything's going to be flopping around and you're going to and you're going to say to yourself you know what's going on here so this is the best way to eliminate it also this is my Yates American 16 inch number one joiner. It's uh, from the 1940s. I bought this a couple of years ago. Uh, drove all the way to Philadelphia to rescue it. Uh, brought it back here. It was a train wreck. It was sitting in a barn for a really long time, completely rusted over. I uh, went ahead and uh, completely restored it and now it's uh, my, uh, my shop joiner. Uh, the, the reason why I'm showing you this photo is because I wanted to show you one of the versatilities of the bigger joiners. A lot of people are worried that they got to lean way over the machine. Uh, in order to do regular edge joining, which is obviously not the case here. As you can see, I've moved the fence up by simply sliding it uh, closer to the front edge. And now, basically what I've done is I've created uh, an 8-inch joiner here by eliminating half the cutter head, and now I don't have to bend over to uh, you know, reach to the far end in order to uh, do that. One of, the, one of the things that you always want to check, uh, even though you have rigid settings on these uh, big old cast iron machines, or at least one thing I always check is every time I move the fence and really after it's been sitting for a while I always like to take a square and I always like to check the fence especially since I'm going to be doing edge joining here to uh, make sure that it's still square and it is uh, ready to go because we're going to be doing edge joining so that we can prepare one edge to uh, head over to the table saw and uh, start ripping stock to width. So I wanted to show you that uh, so that uh, you're aware of it. Definitely want to wear hearing protection. These machines are loud. This piece is for the sides of the cabinet. I'm just going to rough cut at the length there.